the K-Silver TMR joysticks have arrived. All told, a little over $25 for 10 joysticks. A little more than what the Hall Sensor joysticks run, but a lot cheaper than the Ghoulie Kit TMR joysticks. Of course, you don't get those fantastic thumb knobs that come with the Ghoulie Kit. I'll put a link in the description to where I ordered them from. Both sensors are blue on these as they are for the DualSense controller. If you are ordering them, make sure you order the correct type. Let me take a closer look at the joystick. KS is embossed on the sensor housing, makes them very easy to identify, and that is nice. Now here is a very nice touch. This little cutout on the housing right here, the DualSense BDM20 and I believe later versions have a small capacitor right in that location. I remember having to cut away some molding flash in that spot from a sensor so it wouldn't rub on that capacitor. Very nice of them. Well done. The joystick frame looks just like the frame that is used in the case over hall sensor version. If I can remember, I'll put a link for a video where I take the mechanical case over joystick apart. There are slight differences from the Alps. There is a very tiny magnet that is curve shaped. Already seeing quite a bit of difference between this TMR joystick and the Ghoulie Kit TMR. But it does look like the poles of the magnet are the front and back, just like the Ghoulie Kit TMR joystick. Whereas the poles for the Hall Effect joysticks are on the small ends of the magnet. It does feel to be a bit weaker magnet than the Ghoulie Kit. I don't know if I'm not remembering correctly. It hasn't been that long ago. But this does seem a bit weaker. This is the inside of the sensor. Looks like 5E on the first line and WM on the second line. Sure looks like a 5 to me. At least I'm sure it's WM. Melted plastic pins look to hold the PCB in place. I will do battle with them in a bit. Here's a close up of the outside of the sensor housing. You can get a good view of the KS logo. And the nice cutout on the bottom right of the housing. That is real attention to detail there. Let me see if I can get the board out of the housing without destroying it. Housing plastic is quite rigid. I'll just cut the edges away. I'll use the soldering iron with the tip I use for plastic and melt out the three little plastic pins. Looks like it's intact and undamaged. There is only the one device on the PCB, a small three-leaded sensor. No other passive devices are on the board. PCB, three-leaded sensor, and that's it. So this is going to have to rely on the bypass capacitors on the controller mainboard. Another reason to be very careful when removing the old joystick and not knock them off. The K-Silver sensors seem to have the same magnet arrangement as the Ghoulie Kit sensor, so I'm using my test board that has the sensor in line with the electromagnet axis. The Ghoulie Kit TMR sensor was faster than all the Hall sensors I had tested, and I am curious to see if this K-Silver TMR sensor is going to be that fast. I'll get my electromagnet hooked up and see what kind of timings I get. The electromagnet setup is the same I've used in the last couple of magnetic sensor tests. I do still plan on an updated, faster switching version. The yellow trace, channel 1, is the current through the electromagnet. And the green trace, channel 2, is the voltage from the TMR sensor. I have the voltage to the electromagnet at about the minimum I can run it at. And it is hard saturating this TMR sensor. This 6 to 700 microsecond delay here is not a delay that will occur in use. This delay is from saturating the sensor and or sensor amplifiers. So I have to move the sensor away from the electromagnet to reduce the magnetic field. Okay, that looks like it should. Not quite 0 volts on the low side and not quite 1.8 volts on the high side. Here you can see that delay is gone. Rise time is following right along with the magnetic field. So this is a very fast sensor. It's faster than I can measure with this setup. Just like the Ghoulie Kit sensor. That was rise time, so let me do fall time and see how it looks. Okay, looks the same. So rise and fall time seem balanced and fast. So just like the Ghoulie Kit TMR sensor, all I can say is I'm sure rise and fall times are well under 3 milliseconds. There has to be some delay, but I think it is hidden in the switching noise. Again, I can't give it a value, only that the delay is well under 50 microseconds. Too fast to be noticeable in a controller. So these are very fast sensors. They're going to feel as if you're using a potentiometer braced joystick. I do want to take a closer look at the sensitivity of these sensors. The Favor Union Hall sensor is still the least magnetically sensitive sensor I've tested. My test setup here running at maximum power 
doesn't even come close to saturating it. Here is the Ghoulie Kit sensor at about the same distance I was running the K-Silver sensor. Maybe 200 millivolts of output compared to 800 millivolts from the K-Silver. So the K-Silver is much more sensitive. I have to move the Ghoulie Kit sensor into the electromagnet to get close to full output. The thing is, I would rather the sensor be less sensitive and use a larger magnet. Of course, a larger or more powerful magnet costs more money. However, a less sensitive sensor is less likely to suffer from extraneous magnetic fields. But it is a very fast sensor and looks very good so far. I have 1.8 volts going to the TMR sensor and the meter is set to measure microamps. I'm not positive I'm remembering correctly, but of the Hall sensors I've tested, I think the K-Silver Hall sensor was the most power hungry. Starting to be too many to keep track of now. But this is very low. Again, very much along the same line as the Ghoulie Kit TMR. I think the Ghoulie Kit ran around 210 microamps, so this might be a tiny bit more. Maybe 10 to 20 microamps? A meaningless amount. Still, so much less than the 6 to 800 microamps the regular potentiometers pull. Here I'm just checking what the sensor output is at the center position. I ended up checking all 10 joysticks, 20 sensors. A lot of them were close to 100 millivolts from perfect center. Three of the 20 were less than 10 millivolts off, and I would consider that as close to perfect as can be expected. This sensor is only off because of the magnet position. The sensor itself is just about perfect. Now this second sensor here is one of the ones near 100 millivolts off. And the mechanical joystick part is doing a very good job of returning it to about the same spot every time. Hysteresis of the joystick mechanism looks to be very good. But for this sensor, it's not the magnet position causing the offset error. The sensor output itself is that far off from the 900 millivolt perfect value. Now that there is calibration software, that difference is not going to cause a problem. I might as well quit checking for it. But I did find it interesting that of the 20 I checked, none of them were on the low side of 900 millivolts. Of course, these two are the only two sensors I pulled from the joystick to get a neutral magnetic field value but they should be targeting a 900 millivolt output. So I would expect some of the outputs to be below 900. A little odd, I would say. This will probably be the last time I use this controller to test joysticks. I know I've changed joysticks so many times in it, I've lost count. The circuit boards in these controllers do seem to be pretty good quality, but it's still a cheap board and can only take so many soldering cycles before the pads will start to delaminate. This is the controller I was testing the Favor Union Hall Effect joysticks with. They are quite good, really. But technology moves forward, so out they go. This is a BDM20 controller board. And right down here is the capacitor that the notch in the sensor housing will avoid. Actually, as much as the plastic sticks out on the bottom of these sensors, if that notch wasn't there, it would be a real problem. Physically, looks like a great fit. After soldering in the joysticks, I always hook up the battery and connect to the gamepad tester website to make sure everything is working as it should. But here I'm going to do a bit extra. I want to see how much effect the speaker has on the right joysticks up and down axis, considering how sensitive this TMR sensor was in testing. So I'll go to the calibration website and do a stick center calibration. Then without the speaker in place, I'll see if I can move the right joystick so that the up down axis reads zero. Then I will put the speaker in place. Really, not much effect. Not much at all. I was expecting it to move the axis more than that. I think the direction that the TMR sensor is sensitive to the magnetic field helps it ignore most of the magnetic field from the speaker. The speaker has had more effect on the Hall Effect joysticks than the TMR joysticks. Well, the Favor Union Hall stick was pretty impervious to it. Of course, once it's all back together and calibrated, it doesn't really matter. I was just kind of curious what effect it might have. Everything is working, so I'll put it all back together and see how the new case over TMR joysticks do. With it all reassembled, I'll calibrate it. I will redo the stick center calibration. The right joystick doesn't return to the same spot as good as the left one, but it's not bad. Then I'll do the range calibration. I've gotten in the habit of going three turns in one direction and then three turns in the opposite direction, and I don't apply much pressure. 
the amount of pressure will affect the outcome, at least by a small amount. Then I will save the changes permanently. I don't like the use of the word permanently here because it can be overwritten many, many times. But I really like the new user interface for the website. It's easier to use and more straightforward. I will go back to the gamepad tester to check it out. Definitely the right joystick doesn't return to center as good as the left joystick. Once it gets used a bit, it will probably do better. Now for the circularity. Left is very good, right at or just over the circle line. Right is looking good too. Both joysticks between 5 and 6% error is great. And nowhere is it inside the circle. Really can't ask for more than that. Circularity might be a bit better than the Ghoulie Kit. A very small sample size here. But it wouldn't surprise me if the curved magnet didn't improve circularity some. The joysticks seem great. I'll use them a bit and then finish this video off. I've got a few hours on the controller now and I have a few thoughts. These are very good joysticks. I can't tell any difference between these and a potentiometer based joystick. If you are looking for a replacement joystick that's as close to what the DualSense comes with, this is probably it. I do think the K-Silver joysticks feel very much like an Alps joystick. Maybe just a tiny bit easier to move, a little less tension. These run less than a third of the cost of the Ghoulie Kit joysticks, so a lot cheaper. And I've been using the Ghoulie Kit with the Ghoulie Kit thumb knobs for a few weeks. It was hard to go back to the standard DualSense thumb knobs. Personally, if I was wanting to replace the joysticks in my controller, I would go with the Ghoulie Kit. I just love the way the thumb knobs feel. And the thumb knobs are the only reason I'd be willing to spend the extra money. If you're happy with the DualSense standard thumb knobs, then I think these K-Silver joysticks are the way to go. With the price of these, I don't see any reason to go with a Hall Effect joystick. I think the Hall Effect sensor days are numbered for the joystick market. TMR looks to be the future for a lot of reasons. Thank you for watching.